Let's have a look at how the Mohr circle can be used graphically to solve problems. There is one way of using calculator and we will see how it can be done. The other way will be use of graphical means. So, what is the problem? Imagine there is a given sigma 1 some amount 12 Pascal, there is a given sigma 3 amount let us say 2 Pascal and theta is equal to 25 degree and the question is how much is the sigma n and how much is the sigma s. So, what does this mean? That means, since I have given the positive magnitude, so they are compressional and theta is equal to 25 degree. On such a plane A B, how much is the normal stress and shear stress acting? One way is that you use the equations and straight away using calculator you can find out. The other is a graphical means that I want to explain right now. So, here in the graph sheet you decide the sigma n and the sigma s axis and you draw they have to be perpendicular sigma n axis, axis has to be the x axis sigma s has to be the y axis always so. Now, here we define a scale, we define let us say here 1 centimeter is equivalent to 2 Pascal, we define the scale. So, therefore, as per that sigma 1 will be equivalent to 6 centimeter and sigma 3 will be equivalent to 1 centimeter. Next, I will plot sigma 1 and sigma 3 manually on the sigma n axis. How to do that? So, from here I will move 6 centimeter somewhere and I write this point as sigma 1 comma 0 which has a basically a coordinate 6 comma 0. And now the sigma 3 will be plotted as 1 centimeter. So, its coordinate is sigma 3 comma 0. So, maintaining the scale that we decided we plot sigma and sigma sigma 1 and sigma 3. The scale should be defined in such a manner that this point should not run away from the page and the mode circle should not be very big. Then the mode circle goes outside the construction page and it should not be very small. If it is too small then I cannot work properly the future the further steps. Now, what is to be done? I know these two points, I can find out the middle point geometrically I will find out, I will measure the distance between them, find out the middle point and plot it. This is going to be the center of the Mohr circle. Now, I have to draw the Mohr circle taking this as a center. So, a Mohr circle is constructed using the compass, it has been drawn. Next, theta is 25 degree, from here I will calculate 2 theta which is 50 degree. Now, I have to draw a 2 theta angle here, 50 degree I have to draw not theta, 2 theta I have to draw and for that from where to draw? From the center and from this line sigma n line I have to draw a 50 degree angle. So, this is going to be our 2 theta equal to 50 degree. This is essential that the drawing has to be from this line and from the center. So, this is our 50 degree as if from sigma n you are moving anti clockwise to theta amount and that line intersects the Mohr circle over here. And its coordinate has a sigma n value and a sigma s value. What does this mean? If I drop a normal here it intersects the sigma n axis and if I drop a normal on the sigma s axis, there is a point over there. Now, I have to find out the this distance in centimeter. Let us say this is y centimeter and from center to this 
this distance as x centimeter x centimeter and y centimeter has been obtained so this x centimeter and y centimeter they basically represent my the sigma n and the sigma s values x is obtained on the sigma n axis this is going to give me sigma n value geometrically y is obtained on the sigma s axis so it is going to give me the sigma s value so these so many centimeters i can write down here then this centimeter has to be converted to pascal following some scale what is the scale the one which we chose 1 cm equal to 2 pascal apply arithmetic if 1 cm means 2 pascal x cm means how many pascal that is the answer sigma n value and if 1 cm equal to 2 pascal then y cm equal to how many pascal that gives me the sigma s value so here in this way without using calculator graphically we have obtained the sigma n and the sigma s values which are working on the ab plane now a question comes in mind suppose i do this graphically and i also use calculator use formula and find out the sigma n and sigma s which one will give accurate answer you can stop the video here think and then run the video and see my answer so the answer is the what the calculator is giving is more precise the reason is when we do such drawing there will be invariably some mistake person to person the accuracy of diagram or drawing will vary yes. having understood about the mohr circle we are going to see a specific few specific problems and how to solve them imagine you are given this kind of data that the sigma 1 the normal stress acting on the ad line is 5.2 unit say pascal sigma 3 acting horizontally and which is a normal stress on the bd line is 2.1 pascal and the given sigma n that acts on the ab line is 4.2 pascal and the given sigma stress or the sigma s stress acting on the ab plane as a shear stress is 1.1 pascal this is the given data and the question is is the following a correct data set is it physically possible to have such a data set note that here there is no theta value given that means that the deep of ab plane or the deep of the ab line into the theta is not given how to solve it i would request you to stop the video think about it and then click and have a look i hope that you have stopped the video now here is a solution recollect this is the formula of sigma n and recollect this is the formula for sigma s sigma n term involves sigma 1 so sigma n is a function of sigma 1 sigma 3 and then theta term and i am writing outside this that cos 2 theta term is there there is cos 2 theta term over there and here sigma s i can write as a function of sigma 1 sigma 3 and theta both sigma n and sigma s are functions of these however the expressions are different so these two does not mean the same relationship and in detail i can say that this theta is basically there will be a sin 2 theta term is there now from this data set one can calculate the cos 2 theta value sigma n is known sigma 1 sigma 3 are given so cos 2 theta can be calculated and from this equation putting these values one can find out the sin 2 theta values there will be a really an ab plane present with a dip theta only if this relationship is maintained it has to be maintained if we find that the kind of cos 2 theta and the sin 2 theta values that we obtained we square them up and add up and add and i don't get one that means this data set is not possible there is no such plane of theta dip where these relationships will work so this was one and now i am going to show you the other problem 
consider this is the problem that the mean of the applied stress is 5 dime per centimeter square and the differential differential stress that acts on that ABCD rectangle is 4 dime per centimeter square. Theta is given as 22.2 degree and the question is how much is the sigma n and how much is the sigma s? How do we find out? Mean of applied stress means I can write here sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2 is equal to 5. Applied stress look at the diagram here is sigma 1 and sigma 3. So, when I say applied stress it means sigma 1 and sigma 3 and the differential stress is 4 dime per centimeter square. So, I can write sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to 4 unit. These are given, theta is also given. So, what to do? One has to find out from here the sigma 1 and the sigma 3 values by solving these two equations. Once this is known, this is known and theta is given 22.2 degrees, then we can apply the standard formula and find out the sigma n and sigma s. What was the formula? Sigma n is equal to 0.5 sigma 1 plus sigma 3 plus 0 0.5 sigma 1 minus sigma 3 cos 2 theta and sigma s is equal to 0 0.5 sigma 1 minus sigma 3 sin 2 theta. So, by applying this formula we can find out sigma n and the sigma s values but this is not the complete solution. In fact, this is just one possibility. So, from the given information, this is just one possibility. So, what is the other possibility here? The other possibility is mean stress, I write like this sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2 is equal to 5 and the differential stress, it was never said whether it is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 or sigma 3 minus sigma 1. So, I can take the second possibility sigma 3 minus sigma 1 is equal to 4. If I take this kind of sigma 1 and sigma 3, if I set in this manner, then I will get altogether different sigma 1 and sigma 3 values. So, in this case sigma 1, sigma 3 can be calculated by solving the two equations. Theta is given, then apply these over there here and here find out sigma n and sigma s. So, in this way from this single given information there will be two possible answers. In one case one sigma n and for that one specific sigma s and in another case another sigma n value and another possible its corresponding sigma s value. Let us look at the Mohr circle and the stress resolution issues once again and let us frame a new problem. This was the diagram that we were showing earlier, sigma 1 applies on AD, sigma 3 applies on BD and from there we find out the normal stress sigma n acting on the AB diagonal and the shear stress acting on the AB diagonal. So, in this diagram you can see sigma n is the resultant normal stress acting on the AB diagonal making an angle theta and sigma s is this time is down plunge direction. And in this way it is acting. What is the resultant of sigma n and sigma s? Sigma r I can write since this angle is 90 degree. So, I can say that sigma r magnitude is equal to square root of sigma n square plus sigma s square. Now, the question is how much is the plunge and how much is the trend of this sigma r? This is the problem. We want to see it through various examples. In this case when sigma n is compressive and sigma s acts down plunge direction of the AB line, in that case we need to find out the plunge of the sigma r line. Now, what is the plunge of sigma r? This line making an angle with horizontal line will be called as the plunge. So, I need to know this total angle, this angle is the plunge of sigma r. Now, I can write from the triangle ABC 
that the triangle that the angle ACB is equal to phi is equal to tan inverse sigma n magnitude divided by the sigma s magnitude. And we know that the sigma n magnitude is this much 0.5 multiplied by sigma 1 plus sigma 3 that means the mean stress plus 0.5 and then differential stress multiplied by cos 2 theta and sigma s is equal to 0 0.5 then the differential stress and then sin 2 theta. Theta is here whereas we are writing 2 theta here why it is so we have already deduced and demonstrated. Now from here I can write phi equal to tan inverse sigma n divided by sigma s. So these two cancels out sigma 1 plus sigma 3 in the numerator divided by sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So this means the differential stress that is in the denominator and then sin 2 theta becomes here cosec 2 theta and then 0.5 and this cancels out this this cancels out cos 2 theta by sin 2 theta is equal to the cot 2 theta. So this is the expression of the phi angle which is over here and we can see from the diagram if this angle is theta this angle is also theta therefore the plunge of sigma r will be given by sum of this angle and that angle so the answer is theta plus phi is the plunge of sigma r what is theta the deep of the diagonal plane ab and what is phi that is tan inverse sigma n divided by the sigma s now what will happen if sigma n does not exist suppose sigma n cancels out because of certain situation with sigma 1 and sigma 3 and imagine that sigma s acts only in the down plunge direction so in that case sigma s itself is the resultant stress sigma r acting on the ab plane which dips at an angle theta or think about a situation when sigma s acts in an up plunge direction then also sigma s becomes equal to the resultant stress that acts on the ab plane as a shear stress. So in these two cases from the diagram we can see that the plunge of line of action of sigma s has to be the theta the dip of the given plane. So in this case plunge is given by theta for this sigma r or for this sigma s. Now take a third example where the sigma s component does not exist because in this case if I take sigma 1 equal to sigma 3 you can see that through equations that the shear stress component actually cancels out and in that case only the sigma n will be acting. So this sigma n itself is the resultant stress acting on the AB plane. This plane has a dip of theta. Now I can extend this red line over here by the blue line and you can see since this angle is 90 degree so that angle is also 90 degree. Now within this triangle some of these two angles have to be 90 so that the total becomes 180. So if this angle is theta this angle becomes 90 degree minus theta. So in this case what do we understand that plunge of sigma r the resultant stress acting on the AB plane is given by 90 degree minus theta. So you can see that the plunge that we deduced here, plunge that we were talking here theta and the plunge we are talking here are changing. So depending on the specific situation we can draw what is the direction of sigma n and what is the direction of sigma s and from there we can easily comment the plunge amount. Now let us take another example and here sigma n is a normal compressive stress and sigma s is moving in an up plunge direction on the AB line. So if this is sigma n and this is sigma s this is to be the blue line is the resultant stress. So phi that we calculated now will be this angle tan inverse sigma n divided by sigma s magnitudes. Once this is phi and this is theta we are interested to find out what is the plunge of this blue line sigma r. Now for that purpose to find out that I draw a horizontal line here and this line is also horizontal. So there are two horizontal lines and there is another line which is inclined that means if this angle is theta this angle is also theta. 
So in that case, the plunge will be given by this angle and I can understand that this total angle phi minus theta angle is equal to plunge. So I can write here phi minus theta is plunge of sigma r the resultant stress. Now let us take another example where theta is the deep of the plane. This is the AB plane. We are looking at two dimensional cross section and sigma s acts in down plunge direction and sigma n the normal stress acts in an extensional manner on the AB plane. So if these two are the vectors, I can think of the resultant vector by this blue line. My question in this case also is how much is the plunge of this blue line? To find out that I draw a horizontal yellow line over here. So if this angle is theta, this angle also has to be theta because there are two parallel lines and there is an inclined line there. So if this is theta, that angle is also theta. Now from the diagram, we can clearly see that this is the plunge of the sigma n stress axis and how much is that? This is given by the total angle phi, the total angle phi minus theta. So phi minus theta here is plunge of sigma r. Say on this AB plane sigma n is the extensional normal stress that acts and sigma s is the shear stress that acts in an up plunge direction. In that case, the resultant sigma r will be oriented by vector addition can be done. One can draw a parallelogram and then find out the sigma r direction. In that case, phi angle will be given over here sigma n divided by sigma s and then tan inverse, which we have already seen over here. Phi is given by tan inverse this. Now in this case, if I draw a yellow horizontal line like this and this line is also horizontal, these two are parallel lines, there is an incline that intersects, theta is the deep of the AB plane and we are observing in two dimensional section. So if this is theta, this angle is also theta. Now what is the plunge of the sigma r direction? It is the total angle. The total angle given by this yellow arc will be equal to this theta amount plus phi amount. So I can write here that the plunge of sigma r in such a situation is given by theta plus phi. So I have talked about various cases where the plunge has been calculated. What about the trend? Because plunge and trend together makes the attitude of a line such as the line of action of the stress. Let us look at here. We see that on this two dimensional plane we are constructing the diagram in such this particular case only. This line has a downside towards the right hand side direction and the AB plane also has a downside towards the right hand side direction. So here if AB is dipping towards say northeast that means the trend of AC line is also northeast. If it is x degree then for the AC line it is also the x degree trend. In case of AB we say it is a dip direction whereas for a line of action stress we do not call it dip direction we call it a trend. A line has plunge and trend as the two components of attitude. Now here we can see sigma s equal to sigma r and it is obvious that the dip here also just like this the dip direction of the plane AB is same as the trend of line of action of the sigma s or sigma r stress. Here what is happening? Here the plane is dipping towards right hand side and in my position I can see that the line of action of stress sigma n which is also the resultant stress is plunging to the left hand side direction. So this means that if the plane has a dip direction towards east, this line trend is towards west. If AB's dip direction is x degree from north then, then in that case this line's direction trend is x degree plus 180 degree north. Here what is happening? We can look the same situation has happened. This blue line 
is plunging in opposite direction of the deep direction of the AB plane. So, if this is east geographic direction, then sigma r strain will be west or 180 degree in addition to that. Here what is happening? Here I can see the resultant stress is acting in an extensional manner and this is the direction towards which, which the line is trending which is opposite to the deep direction of the AB plane. If the deep direction of the AB plane is towards say northwest, then the line of action of stress has a plunge towards southeast and the resultant is acting in an up plunge direction. What about this? Here also are they same? No, they are different. Here the line is plunging towards my right hand side which is same as the deep direction of the AB plane. So, therefore, we can say if the AB plane has a deep direction towards south, then this line of action of stress sigma r also has a trend of south. However, here the stress is acting in an up plunge direction. So, in this manner on the incline AB plane, we find out the sigma n and sigma s. If required, we can find out the resultant sigma r and we can find out the magnitude and the attitude of sigma r. Let us take the simple case of maxima minima problem how it applies in the Mohr circle case. So, that is the Mohr circle and this is the required prior information sigma 1 and sigma 3 acts. In such a situation when both are compressive and AB is the diagonal with making theta angle with the horizontal. In that case we can find out the sigma n the normal stress acting on the AB which I have not shown here and sigma s the shear stress that acts on the AB this is the formulae which we have already deduced. Now, if I pose a question for what value of theta sigma theta is sigma n is maximum if this is the question. Imagine that given sigma 1, sigma 3 there are specific magnitudes given, but theta amount is not specified. So, the question is for what value of theta sigma n can become maximum. maximum. Now, in that case look at this equation this sigma n will become maximum when cos 2 theta becomes maximum. When cos 2 theta is maximum that means it can be 1 that means 2 theta can be 0 or theta can be 0 degree. If theta can be 0 degree then how much becomes sigma s sin 2 theta that means sin 0 equal to 0. So, sigma s becomes 0. So, we observe that when sigma n value is maximum for variable angle of theta and what is that theta? Theta becomes 0 degree the sigma s becomes 0. What is the maximum sigma n value in that case sigma n max is given by this becomes 1. So, it becomes sigma 1. Now, similarly if I pose a question for what value of theta sigma n is minimum in that case the cos 2 theta has to be minimum which can be 0. Cos 2 theta 0 means 2 theta has to be 90 degree that means theta has to be 45 degree. So, what is the sigma n minimum value that we can write sigma n minimum value will be cos 2 theta is equal to 0. So, once it is 0 which is sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2. And in such a situation when theta is equal to 45 degree we are just curious how what happens to the sigma s value. If theta is equal to 45 degree then 2 theta means 90 degree which was here sin 90 degree is equal to 1. So, then sigma s becomes sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2. So, this is the maximum possible value of sigma s. Why? Sigma s becomes maximum when sin 2 theta becomes maximum. Why I am saying? Because we have considered there are fixed given magnitudes of sigma 1 and sigma 3 and that there is only possible change in the theta value. So, therefore, from here what do we understand is this when sigma n becomes maximum sigma s is minimum and vice versa that means when sigma s sigma n is minimum sigma s becomes maximum. Okay. Now, I will take you to another easy problem should not be difficult what if the crisp values are not known for some of the parameters. 
For example, say given sigma 1 varying from 3 to 7 Newton per meter square, they are positive, so they are compressive. Sigma 3, I have given positive value, that means sigma 3 is also compressive and it varies from 8 to 11 Newton per meter square. And the question is, how much is sigma n and how much is sigma s? Well, here I have taken theta as a having a crisp value 20 degree. So, in this case, basically you have to apply this equation and this equation carefully so that you get possible values of sigma n and sigma s 